At a glance, everything looks calm and peaceful out here, but I've counted the girls here and I'm missing a cow. Out here on this ranch, if you're missing a cow this time of year, it's either because she broke out and she's grazing on the neighbor's property or she's hiding out somewhere having a calf. When cattle are going into labor, it is not uncommon at all for them to separate themselves from the herd, go off and hide somewhere to go into labor and give birth. This is probably a defense mechanism against predators and this is just kind of how they've evolved. So I'm gonna drive around this ranch here and check some of the typical hiding spots that the cattle out here will often use when they're having calves. Well, I was just about to check this little pocket here on the other side of this old levee, but I think I see her looking at me way across the pond over there. Uh, I don't know if my zoom will go that far, but we'll try. Now I gotta figure out if she has a calf in tow, if she is starting to go into labor, or what the deal is. Maybe she's having trouble. Um, we gotta try to figure it out. After watching her for a couple minutes, she's moving around a lot, which indicates that she does not have a calf on the ground yet. But she is secluding herself, so I think one is coming soon. Um, but she probably just hasn't quite decided where she wants to have it yet. So not in active labor at this point, but she's getting close. So we'll come back in a couple hours and check on her. Over here at the ranch, calf check is a little bit easier because I can see basically the entire field that they're in from the road as I pull in. And this morning, the cows are all waiting up here at the feeder because today is a hay feeding day. And speaking of feeding hay, I, like every livestock producer in the western states, am facing a, a hay shortage. And I'm, I'm looking at my supply that I've got left here, and we're getting dangerously low. This is going to come right down to the wire this year. Every year when I fill the barn, I calculate how much hay I think I'm going to need, but this number changes and varies based on things like weather conditions. And this year we have had some crazy ones. Where I live here in Northern California, we've got unheard of amounts of rain this year and winter just seems to refuse to quit. And while getting all that rain and moisture is a good thing because we need that, it's also a bad thing because the weather's not warming up, which means the grass isn't really starting to grow like it normally would. What this has meant for me is that I constantly need to reevaluate how much hay I have left, how much hay I'm feeding, and if there's anything that I can do to save on that. For example, a couple weeks ago, you guys remember, I took those three harvest steers to the auction. Well, normally I probably would have kept those guys and continued to try to find buyers for them, but with my hay situation being what it was, it was really just a safer bet for me to send those guys down the road so that I didn't have to feed them, and that ended up saving me a significant amount of hay every week. Grandpa always said that you ought to have enough hay to feed through April, and that that's good advice, but that was before we had access to the winter pasture, and things were a little bit different back then. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking, well, if you, just, if you run out, just go buy some more. What's the big deal? Yeah, you have to spend some money that you weren't planning on, but you know, oh well. Well, the trouble is, is that hay is not in an infinite supply and you can only produce it certain times of the year. And it's not the kind of crop that sees a lot of carryover from years before. Just being able to find it is the challenge because I'm not the only one that's in this boat. All the ranchers and livestock growers in this area are facing the same thing. So if there is hay available out there, it's not available for very long because people are buying it up left and right. The good news is, is that the sun is shining and it looks like we've got warm weather coming within the next week. It's good because that's what the grass needs to get going. And I think that I've at least got enough hay to get us that far. Oh, where's the gun when I need it? Yeah, right here.
As I've been sitting here talking, Callie started going nuts, barking at something, and I, I walked up here to look. And of course, I only had my GoPro, which doesn't see very far, but what she's barking at is a coyote that was down there pulling something out of our burn pile. Well, I started hollering at that coyote, and when he saw me, he did start to trot away slowly, not nearly as scared as what I think he should be. So I think tomorrow we might be waiting down here with a 30-30 for him. A lot of people have been asking about these two guys and how they're getting along and I'm happy to say that since putting them in the same pen here together I except for that initial day I haven't seen them fight I haven't seen them get agitated or anything these guys get along just fine plan is to not have them in here for too much longer. I think that I need to do play a little shuffle, but um, pretty soon I think that I will be able to get them into the little field here. So they'll have, this is about two acres and the grass isn't really growing out here because the yearling calves are out here already but it at least gives them a little bit more room. Now, as usual, several things have to happen before this can happen. And the main one being the heifers that are in this group need to leave this field because we definitely don't want them going in with the bulls right now. So I think we're very close to the point where I can put these heifers back in with the main cow herd. The main risk in doing that is just that if one of these heifers moms happens to be out here and not have a calf yet, there's a chance that the yearling heifer would start nursing again. I've seen this happen before um, and it's not what you want because sometimes if she starts doing that, then when the cow has her calf for this year, she doesn't want to accept it because in her mind, she's already got this calf. So we want to make sure that when we put the heifers out there with the cows that they've either got a new calf already or the mothers of the heifers aren't here. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I want to get these steers moved over to the steer pasture. But before I can do that, there's a couple other things that need to happen. First thing is I need to get the steers that are over there now moved back home which I will end up doing next week because they've got an appointment coming up pretty soon. Before I take the new batch of steers over to the steer pasture, I've got a new scale that I'm gonna put on this squeeze chute and I wanna get that set up because I want to get some weights on the steers before they go over there and then I, I wanna weigh them again when they come back and I wanna start learning about average daily gain on grass, things like that. There's gonna be a lot of uh, kind of cool studies, I guess you would say, that I want to do over the next year with that scale. 
and I think I think it's going to be really interesting. We'll talk more about this later. Um, I was actually kind of trying to keep this a secret until I actually install the scale, but it would just be weird to try to explain why I have to wait to move steers over to the steer pasture if you didn't know that. And obviously right now things are awfully muddy in there and it's kind of hard to get any sort of a scale installed. So lots of things are in the works here, but like always, we just gotta wait for it to dry up. I just can't do much in that mud, uh, especially with like pouring concrete or anything like that. The ground really just needs to be a little bit drier. So. Hopefully in the next week or two, we can get to that and get that going. It's been a couple hours since we checked on the cow and now she is progressing kind of as I would expect her to. And she's reached the point where I don't know if you would call this pre labor or what. I mean, everybody probably calls it something different, but You'll notice that she's laying down, standing up, laying down, standing up. When she's up on her feet, she'll be sniffing where she was just laying and what she is smelling or what she's detecting is any discharge that came out of her while she was laying on the ground. When she stands up, she turns around and smells that. And I've always thought that these, these things all kind of signal to her that she's going into labor, I mean, as if she couldn't feel it already. But, they all kind of work together to get her going into that mindset. She's not laying down pushing yet, but I think that is probably right around the corner. Well, it's been about two, three hours since we checked on the cow last and somehow she made it clear down to the other end of the ranch. I thought for sure she would have had it back up there in the trees where she was bedding down. But it's a happy ending because there's a new baby. This tree here. Calf's up, mama's up. She's real attentive to it. So there's not another thing I need to do. We'll leave him be for the night. A couple weeks ago, the channel reached a huge milestone and passed 100,000 subscribers. I uh, just, again, I wanna thank everybody. I, I made a little mention of it when it happened, um, but now we're gonna celebrate the right way and we're gonna do a first ever giveaway on this channel. So it's free and easy to enter. All you guys have to do is leave a comment on this video and that will be the pool of people that we choose from for winners. I think we're gonna do five winners. If you want to be entered in the giveaway, just leave a comment in this video and you'll be entered. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.